Good morning, everybody. As we go to the chitas of today, we are holding in chat on the book of uh, Leviticus, chapter 14, verse 21, in the book of in the book of Ayikra. If he's a poor man and he doesn't have the capability to uh, to buy this animal, and he should only take one male lamb as a guilt offering, as a waving, to forgive upon him. He should take he should take one uh, one tenth of an ephah of fine flour, and mixed with oil. Lemincha as a meal offering, leg shaman and a leg, a lug of oil. Now she says, La Kevizer, we suddenly say this echadi, the libation of the meal offering to accompany this lamb, which is one, he shall bring one tenth of an ephah of flour for his libation offering accompanied with this one lamb. Leg ech is like shaman to place some of it upon the cartilage of his ear and the thumb of the thumb and his big toe. However, as far as the amount of oil required for the libation meal offering, the tailor does not need to specify, but we know it from the other we know it from the from the from the other passages. A shnei is the tailor, and then he should bring two turtle doves. A shnei bnei yein or two young doves. Ashatasig yade, which he has the he has the capability of his uh, what he can afford. Vaya echad chatos, and the doves shall be one of them shall be a chatos. And one of them shall be a nailam. He should bring it on the eighth day of his purity. He brings all this on the eighth day after he went through his purity and he uh, to the door of the tent of meeting. Hashem before God. Now she says, This is the eighth day after he had brought the birds, after he did the whole situation with the birds and the, and the, and the hyssop and the cedar and the crimson wool. So this is eight days later. And the Kayan will take the uh, the Kayan uh, the, 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 the will take the guilt, the uh, the guilt <coughs> offering, which was a lamb, and the leg, the lug of oil, the and the Kayan will make it a waving before God. Then he shall slaughter the guilt offering. And then the Kayin takes from the blood of the Oshim. The Oshim. He puts it upon the, the cartilage of the right ear of the person being cleansed. And on the right hand, the thumb, and the big toe. And from the, uh, from the oil, he shall pour some of the oil into the left palm of the Kayin and then the Kayin takes a little bit with his index finger from the oil that's in his left palm, and he sprinkles it seven times before God, before the before the before the tent of meeting. Then the Kayin takes from the oil that's in his palm. He puts it on the right ear of the person being cleansed. And the left thumb of the person being cleansed. On the left toe of the person's right foot. We put the blood of the guilt offering. Now she says, even if the blood had been wiped off, this teaches us the blood is not a determined factor, but the place, but the but the place is the determined factor. And anything that's left over from the oil. Which is left over in the palm of the coin. Puts the rest on the head. Of this Mitzayda, the one who's coming cleansed, lechapar up to give to him Hashem before God. Then verse thirty, takes one of the doves, turtle doves, or for one of the young doves, which he can afford. what he can afford is echad chatas. He uses one of those doves as a chatas, and one of them as a burnt offering. Allah mincha with the meal offering, the chipper Allah metay and the the hakoyin Allah metay and the koyin will bring kapara forgiveness on this person that's coming to be cleansed. 
לפני השם before God. Verse 32. This is the law of anyone who has a lesion of tzadas. Which he has no money. And the day that it becomes pure. And that completes the Chumash for today. We now go to the Tanya. We continue the Tanya of today. Today is Tuesday. We are in the middle of chapter 40 of Tanya. So we see at any rate that the love and fear of God are described as wings. In the Zayah, they're described as wings. Avon Yira is described as the wings of a mitzvah. Accordingly, according to what we've been said above, concerning the role of love and fear in elevating one's tater and mitzvahs, the analogy is clearly understood as follows. Thus, like the wings of the bird are not the main components of the bird. And if you do, the word, the bird has no wings, or his wings are clipped. Still a bird. Because even a Jewish law, if the bird's wings were removed, it doesn't unkosher the bird. Kshada, the bird is kosher. Because the ikara bird, the, the most important part of the bird is the body of the bird. <coughs> so if the heart, for example, is not in the bird, then the bird's not kosher. But if he has no wings, it's still kosher. The main part of the bird is the head, the body of the bird. Because the kafayim, the, the wings are there to serve the head and the body. The parachabon, so she can fly with these with, with these with these wings. So too is the same analogy. They constitute the essential supernal union. The essence of Teda and Mitzvah is the union of God. Which happens, the supernal will, which is, they cause. The Abishta wants a Dira Betach That God wants to have a dwelling place in this physical world. And that's why he gave, he gave you the Mitzvah. So that they'll be able to reveal Godliness. So Mitzvah is revelation. That's why Chassidus, a Mitzvah is an aid. I'm a testimony that this is what God wants. That's it. A yid should be a yid. A yid should be a testimony. Should be a witness that there's a God in the world. That's what is avoided. The Abish asked to do it. I do the mitzvah. I show that I believe in God. God said to put on tefillin. I put on tefillin because that's what God wants. That's that's it. And I testify to that by me putting on tefillin. Testifies that that's what God wants. And that's really the importance of a mitzvah. That's the body. That is the body. Because the second I go to love and fear, that's about me. My love and my awe, my fear. But the fear of the chimu, so it's also important. It's important, love and fear. That's, that's why it's, there's a chukah, which is the fear of a mitzvah. And there is mishpatim, which is the love of the mitzvah. So every mitzvah has three components. Has the concept of a mishpat, that you understand it and you, and you comprehend it, therefore you love it. It has a concept that it's self-understood above understanding a little bit. It's, a, it's something that, that, that is a spiritual concept. That's the chukah, that's the fear in the mitzvah, the awe in the mitzvah. And then there's the rotsan of the abishta. Then there's the adias. I do it because that's what God wants. And that's what I want because I have a neshama. So God wants it. My neshama wants it, and that's what it is. And that's why I do it. That's l'shma. That's really l'shma. I do it for the sake of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's what means l'shma. It means l'shma means for the name. I do it for God's name. This is what God wants. That's what I do. Self-understood. I need a, if I want, for my sake. The Abish has said, really, we should do every mitzvah because of atheists. That's what God wants. And uh, it's not important what I understand or what I'm going to gain out of it or not. Then the Ebishter wanted Chukim Mishpat. The Ebishter wanted the concept 
of, of, of Yira and Ava. He wanted that. That was part of the package. That he, the Abishta wanted that it should be my Aveda. I should be involved. Shouldn't be just like a, I just do it because that's what I, I am. Uh, that's the way it is. No. The Abishta wanted I should have Aveda. I should comprehend it. That's why God gave me a mind. And he gave me a Chachma Bina Das that I would work through it and I would comprehend. I would comprehend what I understand. I would comprehend there are things that are spiritual above the physical. And that's the beauty. And that's the bird. That makes me fly. That is my wings. It's my wings. If I don't have the wings, I'm still a kosher. I still did the mitzvah. If I do the mitzvah l'shma, then I still did the mitzvah because I did the mitzvah because that's what God wants. You can do a mitzvah not l'shma for no ava and yira and for not, no reason. Just out of rote. No, I'm doing the mitzvah l'shma. And that's why I say a bracha. I'm doing it because God has an agenda. I am here to serve God. That's an expression in the Mishnah. What was I created for? To serve God. That's what I was created for. Not what I'm going to gain, when I, what I'm going to lose, not my hope, not my ava, not my love of God. Not, I'm, I'm here as a servant. I do as a servant to God. That's Lushma. That's that's the greatest level. That's why he explains that a servant can go places that even a minister can go. Because a servant goes to the to the chambers of the king, the inner chambers of the king, because he's bottled, because he does it Lushma. He doesn't do it because he thinks he's a great person. He does it because he realizes that he has a source to serve the king. And it has nothing to do with his smartness. And as not the minister can fall into the concept that he's smart. He's, he's, the, he's the finance minister because he knows finances. And he's a great finance. He actually knows more finances than the king. So the minister can think sometimes he's greater than the king. And that's why the king's always worried. If one day his minister is going to come and, and, and bop him off. So, uh, but he's not afraid of his servant because a servant knows who he is. He has no qualities. He's been chosen. It's a schos for him. I know after the Kuchabricha, I'm the servant of God. That's what I came for. I came to serve Akadish Baruchu, to serve God's wishes. But Abish says, I don't want you to be a servant. I want you to be a son. That's Im Kibanim Im Kavadim. I want you to be more than a servant. I want you to also be a son. I want a relationship. I want you to love me. I want you to have all of me. I want why? Not because, because I want you. Because I don't want you to just do things. About me, I want you. I'm looking what your where is your avoider, and that's important to me, because you're a human being, and I want to have a did a bit I just don't want to come down into the in, into the lower realms. I want you to make it a, a dida. and for you to make it a dida, then you have to uplift it, then you have to transform it, and that comes through ava and yira. So the the love and fear like a wings. May I really elevate the mitzvah mit- to the place where this will. So I, in essence, I, t- I, sh- I, I, in essence, take the mitzvah and I develop it. I elevate the gashmis. I bring godliness into the gashmis, and that's my avoda through my avoda. So I reveal. Let we all say the same thing. A Jew is the same thing. A Jew is a Jew because he's a Jew. Not what he does. A Jew is what he is. The mitzvahs reveal what he is. <clears throat> the mitzvah shows what he is. That's why he's a testimony. It shows what he is. A Jew doesn't do any mitzvahs, class of Shalom in his life. He's still a Jew. The mitzvah shows that he's a Jew. Reveals his Judaism. Reveals his Yiddishkeit. And then his love and fear not only reveals his Yiddishkeit, but actually brings purpose, brings himself into the picture. Not only doing the Abish's will, he's doing his will. I say that Tzayna Kiret Cha. That's where the Mishnah says, make your will his will. Then you're involved. It's not only God's will, it's your will. And then you have the rectification, elevation of even myself. Because I reveal within myself through my love of God and my fear of God, my, that I'm in awe of God. It reveals the will of God. 
Baruch Hu, blessed be He, be Yehud and His and His unity. Shein Yitzchein Yitzira Ubria, which is revealed in the world of Yitzira and the world of Bria, and that's why they don't need if the the, the the ultimate world is Atzilus, but the God created Bria Yitzira because He wanted it. He wanted to have Bria Yitzira. He wanted to have Seichel Amidus. He Mefedish wanted it. So he does like he wanted in the old upper worlds. He wanted it in this world too. He wanted to have our bittel. He wanted to have our mesid, our, our kabbalas, our accepting yoke of heaven. And then he wanted to have our midas. He wanted to have our seichel. That the seichel is used out. Our intellect is used out for this for the for the for the learning of Torah. And our midas ava and yira is used out for the love of God. Uh, feel, so right, this is the statement of Bri the, the, to, the, to his statement that Bri and Siddha are placed are the place to which Tayyidah mitzvahs are revealed, elevated, and where the union caused by them is revealed. That's not that bad. I feel the Basia, the Yutzvidas, the Kedusha, mocking Mrs. Mises, and also in the world of Asiya, the world of action. Because in the world of Yitzida, Bria and Yitzida is where the emotions go. But ultimately, the Abishta wanted the elevation of the physical Asiya. He didn't only want to have the, the wings of the bird. He wanted to have action. He wanted to have the physical action, which no bird can do. Only a human being can do. Because he wanted to ultimately elevate the world to the, to the spiritual world of Asiya, where the world of Asiya comes from, the world of action comes from. Or even to Asiya, the ten lofty spirits of the world, the both the mitzvah consisting of action. So performing the mitzvahs out of submission to a heavenly yoke elevates the mitzvah to the spheres of Asiya, and reveal the supernal union there. For such submission is related to God's attribute of sovereignty, Malchus, that's the world of Asiya, right? We went through, the world of Bria is Chochmah and Bina, the world of Yitzir is the Midas, the six Midas. We're missing the world of Malchus, the spheres of Malchus, and spheres of Malchus, the attribute of kingship is the world of Asiya, the world of action, because Malchus is action. Which pervades the world of uh, the world of Asiya. Moreover, these mitzvahs are performed at the level of action, which corresponds to the world of action. The Chaim Mikra, and that's what the Pasuk is. That's the study of Pasuk, right? So we learn in Chassidus, as you can say right now, that the uh, that action is the world of uh, the Pasuk, the simple Pasuk. That's why the Gemara says, Ein Mikra Yetzim Deib Shutai, that the Pasuk doesn't go away from its simple meaning. The physical way, because that's the world of Asiya. Then you go to the Mishnah, which is the world of Yitzira, the four, six emotions of what to do or what not to do. And then you go to the world of Bria, which is the Chachma behind this Mishnah. The Chachma, the wisdom, the Gemara, the wisdom behind every halacha. And that's the Gemara and ultimately Shulchan Aruch, etc. etc. Hey, Mikra, this too is related to the world of Asiya. For the mitzvah of studying the scripture requires one to recite the holy words, and the speech is considered a minor form of action. But the case of the Mishnah, Mishnah is all tradition. The six tractates of the Mishnah, which Rebbe wrote, is in the world of, of, Yitz, of Yitzira. Blessed ain't safe is revealed in Yitzira. The Allah ruling, right, consists of the Mishnah derived from Midas, right, from the attributes. The attribute of chesed that dictates a particular object is deemed kosher, or the litigant the judge is innocent, while gavura dictates that the rule is unkosher, or the litigant is pronounced guilty, and so on. So you have gavura and chesed. The Mishnah is therefore in the level of Yitzira, the world of Midas. And then we come to Talmud be Bria. And then you come to the case of Talmud, Talmud the, or, the, the, the Gemara, the union of Ein Saif is revealed in the world of Bria, the world of creation. For the Talmud seeks out logic, like the world of Chachma and Bina, underlining the Mishnic law. And thus, it relates to Chabad, Chachma, Bina, Das, which manifests itself in the world of creation, the world of Bina, according to Kabbalah. This does not mean, however, that the union effect in the Mishnah, for example, takes place only in only Yitzhidah, and that affected by the study of scriptures only in Asiya, that doesn't mean that way. It doesn't mean because they're all interconnected. 
scripture is holy than Mishnah, because that's the opposite. We know that the Chumash is holy. You don't put a Mishnah, you don't put Mishnah on top of a Chumash. You don't put a Gemara on top of a Chumash. You put a Chumash on top of all of them, because Chumash is Teda Shebek Sav, is the written law. Over here in Kabbalah, Chumash is in, is in the world of Asiya. It's upside down. So really, it does, <laughs> doesn't mean that. So it just means, as al Rebbe says, the scripture is holy the Mishnah, as indicated by the law, that one may not place scripture on top of the books of Mishnah, but vice versa. And Mishnah is holy than Talmud. Because Mishnah, we know that you never argue with the Mishnah. So uh, the, you learn Gemara, the, everybody's trying to figure out to understand the Mishnah, not to argue with the Mishnah. Because that's a Tana. You now we can argue with a Tana, the Mishnah. Why then does the revelation of Ain't Safe create by their respective study in reverse order? We say the Talmud is in the world of, of, of Bria. That's a higher world. Mishnah is in the world of Yitzhida. It's a lower world. And Mikra, the verse, is in the world of action. Sounds like a reverse order. With Talmud, at least the holy of three, affected revelation of Bria, the highest of three worlds. So the Alter Ever said we must preface, say that, the Heinish of limit maker. This means that the study of scripture, we're not talking about Teda. Teda, Teda Shabbat Sav goes upon all. Talk about the learning of Teda. The union, the learning of Chumash. Everything is revealed in the world of, 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 Asi, of Atzilas. The greatness of Mikra is that the verse itself, the words of Teda, can bring down Atzilah straight into Asiyah. And that's the power of saying the words of Teda by itself, even not understanding it. That's why when you make a bracha on the Teda, you have to know what you're learning. If you're learning, to, if you're making a bracha on the learning of Teda, you have to learn, you have to know what you're learning. That's why in the morning, when you make a bracha of the Teda, they bring you down a, a verse of Teda Shepik Sav, Hashem Yishmerech, right after the bracha you say the three blessings of the priestly blessings, and then they bring you a Mishnah, a very easy Mishnah, that everybody can understand the Mishnah. It's very easy, and it's in English also, so that you know what you're learning. So when you made a bracha over the Gemara, you know what you're learning. It's not a hard, they didn't, they didn't choose a very hard Mishnah. You have to hard understand the Mishnah. They picked the easy Mishnah. They give you what the beauty of mitzvahs, and what accomplished through every mitzvah. So, uh, Mishnah ad yitzid levada, meaning that, so that's the, the, the mikra, the, the, the verse is more powerful. Because it's higher, it comes down much lower. That's why a five-year-old can learn a pasuk in the table. The Ebishter can come down to a five-year-old. Rebbe, no, Rebbe only can come down to a Mechamesha Mishnah. You can, that can only come down to a child that's older. And then you have to be older to learn Gemara. Because, because, because the, the Rebbe only can bring it down to the world of Yitzhida. And the sages of the Talmud can only bring down their knowledge. That's why it's very hard to understand Gemara. It's much harder to understand Gemara. Because Gemara, goes, it, it's only revealed in Elam Abriya. You have to really harva. You have to, so to say, work hard when it comes to Gemara. To comprehend Gemara. But everybody can understand a pasuk of Chumash. Everybody can understand a pasuk a pasuk of Chumash. <laughs> what God says, everybody can understand. What Rebbe, what Rebbe reveals, lesser can understand. What the Gemara reveals, even lesser people can understand. And what's, re and what's revealed in Elam Atzilus, even lesser people can understand. But the Mishnah, everybody can understand. I mean, the pasuk and the Teda. Everybody can understand. Now she says, I come to translate every from five year old should learn Mikra. The second a person knows how to speak, a child knows how to speak, you teach him Teda. Actually, when a child goes to school, what do they teach him? Pasha Vayikra. They teach him the portion of Vayikra. They start teaching him in the, in the, in the book of Leviticus. <coughs> so, why? Because this child can understand the book of Leviticus. A five-year-old child can understand the book of Leviticus because it's simple, simple, simple words of the Torah. 
You call them batzilas because all of them, Torah, Scripture, Mishnah, Gemara, are all in Atzilas. They all ultimately come from the world of Atzilas and affect the union and revelation there. The difference between them lies in how far from Atzilas they impact the study reaches. How far does it reach? That's why we go from both sides every morning. We learn Chumash. That's Tereh Shebeksav. And we learn the high, the, uh, the most deepest concept in Tereh Shebeksav. Chesidus. So we go from Eilam Asiya. We, we learn Chumash and Ashi, which every five-year-old child can learn. And every one of us says, just reading the words is already the mitzvah. That's why when you call a person up to the Teda and he makes a brach on the Torah reading, he doesn't understand what he, somebody else is reading it for him. Because thus the words itself bring a revelation of God into this world. Because the Eivishter can come straight down to the world through his words. Vat Hashem. Nothing greater than to read Chumash. Pash it every day. To push it, when I'm saying the words of Chumash, you should also be saying the words of Chumash. It shouldn't only be me who's saying the words. You should be saying the words too, because the push it, simply saying the words of Chumash, you bring down Eilam Atzilas, you bring down the revelation of the world of Atzilas into the world of Asiya. And there's no greater revelation than that. Ava Kabbalah, Kabbalah, however, ain't even special Kabbalah, Matzilas, but the Yitzir Asiya. Kabbalah stays in Atzilas. It's hard. It's very high, high levels of godliness. Kabbalah. That's why we learn chassidus more than Kabbalah. Because Kabbalah doesn't leave the world of Atzilas. So it doesn't come down into this world. Don't we can it's hard to comprehend Kabbalah. You have to be a very high level to kind of understand Kabbalah. Which of course is brought in Chaim. And therefore, we learn chassidus more because the chassidus takes the, 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 the Elam Atzilas and it brings it down into understanding. But ultimately the, the, the teachings of Kabbalah are in the world of Atzilas. And they don't come down into the world of Bri, Yitzir, or Asiya. Because they're very deep concepts and they stay in the world of Atzilas. And the union stays there and is there. But if I learn a Pasuk and Chumash, I take a Pasuk and Chumash and I learn a Pasuk and Chumash. I read a Pasuk and Chumash. I understand it. I surely understand it. I bring about the union of Atzilas, the world of Atzilas, into the world of Asiya. And there's a great revelation in the world of emanation that comes down into the world of action through my saying the words of Chumash. And that's why everyone should learn Chumash every single day. As the Pasuk says, You should learn every single day. You should learn a Pasuk of Chumash every single day. Because through that, you're bringing Atzilus into this world, into a physical way. The simple verse, the Abishta can connect the world of Atzilus and the world of action, he connects it. And also, you should learn halacha. You should learn halacha every day. Kalashayna halachas. You should learn halacha every day. Because every halacha you learn brings about the union of the connecting of the spiritual, of the world of Yitzira with this world of Asiya. And you should learn Gemara every day. <laughs> Shall learn Tereh Peh, which brings about the union of the world of Bria, of Atzilus, to the world of Bria. And that's, that brings down its union. So you create the whole union between the upper worlds and the lower worlds through my Limerat Tereh, my Limerat Chumash, through learning Chumash every day, through my learning Tereh every day, through participating in learning Allah every day, or learning Ashtikol Gemara every day, Learning a piece of Gemara every day. And the more the merrier, the more that you can learn, the better it is. Because these unions that I create through my limit, through my learning of these three things, four things, I bring about a union between the upper worlds and the lower worlds. And that's the beauty of this concept. And that completes the Tanya for today. Today is the eighth day of the month, which is chapter 45 to chapter 48. Chapter 45 to chapter 48, you would do the chitas of the day. I wish you all a wonderful and beautiful and happy and healthy day. God bless you all. See you, Mitchum, tomorrow, 8 o'clock.
continue to learn the chitas of the day. I want to make mention to everybody that's listening to me over here or on Facebook to make sure you sell your chametz. Don't wait till the last day to sell your chametz. Make sure you sell your chametz wherever you are in the world. Make sure you sell your chametz. You can go to ChabadWestBoker.com. You can sell it there or come to the Chabad house. Just make sure. Don't wait till Sunday. Make sure you sell your chametz.